This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Who Podcast The Watchmen. I am Phil, joining me as always, because I can't... Not even a giant catapult could get rid of him is. Tyler. Man, they they keep ratcheting up the crazy on this show, I swear. Oh gosh. Uh just I don't know. We'll get into this. Pull up. Let's pull up some info here. <sighs> if you don't like my story, write your own. <laughs> Crazy is an understatement right now. I swear. Like, hmm. this, once again, this episode answer some things and ask more questions and makes us go what <laughs> uh, but now that i see it written out i thought it, it was like lady true like t-r-u-e but no <laughs> it's spelled oh yeah it's like t-r-i-e-u which yeah. i'm guessing is what probably vietnamese then i always watch it with the caption on just because i i see i pick up more especially if i'm like watching it and the kids are around and yeah i'm like watching on my phone and stuff like having the caption just it helps <clears throat> but yeah this episode uh <laughs> all right i mean i will say hmm. visually there's some awesome shots like, oh yeah uh, some cool transitions with the way um she flipped the thing down and then it was like flipping the gate oh um, yeah, yeah that was the where she's like walks into the image of her uh great grandfather and stuff like that and but man a lot of gave us a lot i mean a bit opens up with uh with lady true offering this cut she wants to buy this couple's land and she offers i guess they couldn't have kids she's like you know I can make it happen. And she's like, oh, by the way, I've already taken your DNA and make, created your son. Here you go. Yeah. And how, how many years ago do you think that was? Because it, it didn't say exactly. Yeah, I don't know. So that happened. And then she bought the land so that the media right was hers because she owned the land at the time of it, it landed. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because she gave them, like, what, like three minutes to decide? Yes. <laughs> It was interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you see this? I didn't even notice this, but the what the article says, do you know what the name of the couple was? Uh, they said it, and I can't remember. They said maybe this is another homage. The Clarks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they said the Clarks in my first house. Hmm. Wanted to say the Kents, but yeah. Could be. I mean, be a nice little homage, nice little kind of, kind of like a, Zack Snyder in the movie has a little homage to Night Owl stopping the Waynes from being murdered. Oh, yeah. Um, it's just kind of like a wink. But so, I mean, I mean, but she, I mean, I mean, Lady True should have just like opened with, hey, I deposited five million dollars in your account and here's the baby you've always wanted. I would have been like, five million dollars, bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, she's like, that should cover. Baby food, location, college, college. <laughs> baby food. I've been like, all right. Or if, I mean, if you want to press it, be like, hey, how about 10? <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, uh, you know. Because she, she did. She did. That's what they're like. Oh, yeah, you're the billionaire. She's like trillionaire. I'd be like, uh, five. How about 10 million? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd be like, 10 million just in case, you know. It's, we you know, just like want to never work here. It's like a $5 Epic. bill to you. Come on. Yeah. Like, you're like, I'm printing money at this point. Because she's the one that bought Veidt's company. And the one we do know for sure because the statue helps reinforce that, you know, Adrian Veidt is Jeremy Irons. Uh-huh. Uh, like, you know, we, we pretty much knew that. But 
who knows with this show. It kind of keeps throwing us for loopholes with stuff, and weird stuff. Why well, have a theory about her, who she really is? Who, Lady True? Yes. I don't know if you caught the line later on when, uh, well, well, we'll get there. We'll get there when Angela and, uh, when they go talk to Lady True, I, she throws out a line, which I, I think it, you know, explains some stuff. <laughs> Do you think she m- might have any tie? That is what do you think it is? Just say it. We're here. Okay. Well, she throws out the line to them that she says, you know, what is it? Mo- she said, I forget the exact wording, but she said something about like most or all of her greatness came from like the seed of Adrian Veidt. I was like, what if that's literal seed? What if he's her father? Yeah. I also thought like, what if it ties back to even like Eddie Blake and Dr. Manhattan? Yeah. Because it is Vietnam. They're in Vietnam yeah. You know, because there's that scene where. Blake kills the pregnant mm-hmm. Vietnamese lady and he goes off on Dr. Manhattan and everything like oh where well, yeah because she said I promised my mom I'd never leave Vietnam but I found a loophole like what if there's like a literal thing to it that she can't leave the soil or something like I don't know because I was even thinking too it's like yeah we did see Dr. Manhattan and a comedian in Vietnam but what if Adrian Veidt was over there at the same time I mean it's possible. What if Lady Have True? Keep, what if Lady True's only half Vietnamese? I have to keep reminding myself of the timeline of stuff. Yeah, uh, especially when, like, you know, he says, talking to when Agent Blake's in the car, and she's like, "Tell him about my trauma," and it's like, "Oh, uh, her parents were the comedian and the Silk Spectre and the Minutemen." And I did like, the, I did think it was interesting. He, she's like, "Oh, the TV series." He's like, "No, that's full of historical inaccuracies." Yes. Uh, so I like that that they don't even know the the history. Well, I mean, I kind of like get it. I kind of get it. Is- yeah, and stuff was top secret, especially when people had secret identities. On my, I mean, it's like, do we know everything? We don't even know. We put, we might not even know every detail of like the JFK assassination. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, and everyone there, you know, you kind of knew their identity. You know, it's probably probably even harder when people have secret identities. So, I mean, that was interesting that, you know, it's not common knowledge that Eddie Blake's the comedian and that she's the Silk Spectre. She she references her ex and they don't realize her ex is Dr. Manhattan. Well, yeah, probably because Blake, yeah, she probably didn't realize who she was until he's like, oh, yeah, Silk Spectre, you know. So I find that interesting. Yeah, because, because so, Angela and Lori kind of like hook up because – it kind of uh, two seconds after the end of the last episode, after the car hits the ground, like Angela comes running out. I thought that was cool how it overlaps. So mm-hmm. the time that Blake is in the in the box, I, Angela is actually at the Heritage Center. Yes, I thought it was kind of interesting the fact that she reports a break in. Like, oh, if you see an alarm go off, it's just me checking it out. And then she breaks the glass and sne- gets in. Yeah, or well, she can break the glass and just be like, oh, it's probably vandals smooth operator that way no one then, see no one see you can't no one gets angela you know even on video walking into there so and i thought it was interesting like it was angela's car like i didn't even think about it it just looked like a car that dropped uh because it was her car you know not sister knight's car but angela's uh-huh. car um so I thought that was interesting i love how the car gets like lifted and like drag how long how much through the air and then it gets smashed on Drop. the ground but that's still that that high to key is still in the wheel well <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they said they stole it and then dropped it right back I took it from and it's just i mean this this episode just the mysteries alone of mm-hmm. the pills that will is taking wills knows and is working with dr true dr true's daughter is something like her, maybe her mom reincarnated or her mom's clone that she's raising or something. She talks about a memory that she could feel, which kind of makes you think it's an actual memory and not a nightmare. So if true, if if true is Adrian Veidt's daughter, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe the daughter's a clone or something. Um, maybe, so, hey, maybe unlike the, fa- maybe unlike Adrian Veidt, who's getting older, maybe true's figured out, hey, if I clone myself a body, I always have like a spare body. You know, I'll have a young body to keep yeah. putting my mind in. Exactly. Um, so we have this 
reoccurrence of they're doing something and in three days something big is going to happen. TikTok, TikTok. Yeah, everybody's like, I'll do TikTok. And you're just like, ah. I'm like, enough, just tell us. <laughs> like I said, it gets us more questions of, oh, what's happening? What's going on? Because so we find out, I found it kind of interesting that so Sister Knight, Angela, takes the pills and stuff to we'll say Wade because he doesn't have his mask on in this episode. And we find out, I guess he lives in the bunker in his backyard instead of actually in his house. Hey, can't 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 ambush. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can't get ambushed. Can't like, um, get, you know. I mean, he's pro- I mean, he's probably he's probably paranoid. But hey, I mean, still, I mean, if as if he's not with anybody, if he's fine living in a bunker again. You can't get shot down there. He finds out he he pulls out. Angela pulls out the clan outfit and shows him that what she found of Judd's, and he's like, "That's old school." Do you think he was Calvary? And she's like, don't know. And <laughs> how do you word it? He's like, he was a white man in Oklahoma. Yeah. By him being a racist. I'm like, okay, that's kind of just generic, but dang, dude. But then I was like, uh, but then I was like, wait, you're a white man in Oklahoma. Are you trying to tell her yeah. you're a racist too? Yeah, exactly. I was kind of like, okay, that he's like, we got ourselves a predicament or uh-huh. something. Like- oh, but then he says, he goes, he goes, oh, are you sure it wasn't his father's? He was a law man. Yeah, he said it was fathers. He was a lawman. Could have kept it for sentimental reasons. So interesting. But I'm like, is she sure that he's not Wade? Isn't part of uh, the cavalry also? Oh, it suck, man. Like if if, if that's how they went with yeah. things, like it just would be really. I think I think it'd be poor storytelling. Although but. I mean, would he see who living in a bunker though? If he was part of them though. It would be interesting if Judd wasn't Calvary, uh, but like had a had some sort of a tie to it before it split off and became the Calvary. Oh, and uh, her, yeah, and her grandfather killed him, and he wasn't even part of the Cavalry. You know, like because you know the Calvary basically it's I guess it's the clan or it's spun out of the clan. They've never really kind of distinguished. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. Just interesting. Oh my lord! And then uh, Angela's like cleaning up. Uh, you know, she's taking apart the wheelchair and making sure there's no trace of her grandfather being. Uh, you know, yeah, at at her place because Lori's on about the wheelchair and yeah, man, he's uh, <laughs> she's a Jew just in all silver. No, my lord, yes. There. That this part was like to me kind of blew my mind because. She's chasing him, and everywhere he's running is like he knows where he's going. Mm-hmm. I thought he's going to lead her into a trap at first. Right, exactly. Because of like the way he moved that panel and he ran through, it's like he knows exactly where he's going, and she's following blindly. And then he pulls out bottles and shoots himself with some sort of lubricant, <clears throat> and then just lays down and slides right in through a sewer grate. Yes. I was like... What? I just kind of paused and was like, "What?" Oh my lord! Yeah, because I mean, it, the sad part is he actually reminds me of a Spider-Man villain called Slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying to see if I could share this picture. I was I pulled up, but uh, da, 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 da. maybe not. All right. But yeah, no, like it's it's like an all white costume with like goggles and stuff. But yeah, like yeah, the slide villain he like created it was almost like Teflon, almost like you know, like you have on pant like non stick pans and stuff. So it wasn't actually <laughs> lube, but like he could like he could basically almost like sl- he, almost like he was skating, but he didn't have anything on his feet. He could just like slide, and it was very weird. And then she tells Red Scare and Pirate Jenny, and they're like. Okay. So, so, so was Lube Man up to anything, or was do you think he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time? I think he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, or he just, I don't know. It was just randomly weird. Um, but then we got Adrian, and we kind of saw the place where Miss Crookshanks and Mr. Phillips are created. Yeah, he's pulling fetuses out of a river. Uh, 
I missed little bits of it because the kids were acting up and I was trying to pause it. Yeah. Um, but I was like, okay. Cause like my, one of my things has been, we never see where they come from, but it's not on the property of the mansion. It's somewhere else. Yeah. It's like in a river. Uh, um, so he brings them. <sighs> we get a kind of an idea of how they start. Um, he makes a comment about, uh, I'm your master, but I'm not your maker. And that life is a gift with purpose and you have none Mm -hmm. other than to serve. And then we go into the house and we see more of the birthday cake. Um, Oh, there's just bodies everywhere. And he's like, that was a rough night. (laughs) Yeah. He massacred and killed every other Miss Crookshanks and Mr. Phillips. Yep. And then they use them for target practice yes. of sorts. A giant catapult when he like launches them into the sky until they disappear at a certain point. And then he's looking through his spyglass and there's a really interesting transition with the spyglass where he's looking at the spyglass in the sky and the bodies just disappear. And then it kind of zooms back to the circle of the spyglass and then zooms back, to, pulls out from the moon. And we're back. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. That was interesting. So are they trying to say he's on the moon? Maybe. Did Manhattan or somebody create a the, uh, environment for him on the moon? And again, it's like, so I'm assuming he's trying to escape, but if he's on the moon, where the hell is he going to go? Because I guess maybe that was part of what he was working on in the couple, last couple episodes. It's like, you know, maybe like a space suit. But again, even if you get to the surface of the moon, are there, are there any kind of spacecraft sitting out there? We don't know. I mean... True has been working on these really cool hover things. Um, like the technology, it's so random. Yeah. You know, like, like, cause, okay, for example, Sister Knight has an answering machine. Yes. A full on answering machine. Yeah. Think about that for a second. And last week, Blake said something about her pager to uh, beep yeah. her. So the technology is not consistent. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, I don't know about the beeper, but I was going to say with the answering machine instead of voicemail, maybe it's it's because it's easier not to tap or something or trace it or anything. I don't know. Maybe. Don't know. But but uh, but I was going to say about uh, Adrian fight. Maybe I wonder if maybe he, I mean, he was the one who was able to open that portal and drop the giant squid on New York. I wonder if he can open another portal to get back to Earth. So I'm saying like, I, I don't know. And. Because we find because he was saying out, he was saying it was like a if I first thought it was a paradise but then it wasn't so it's a prison and uh, I don't know it just it was just kind of his his is curiouser and curiouser so I don't know it just so I'm not sure what to think of his whole story and what he's doing yet because did you notice how everybody except one male body in that room looked the same there was like one body that was murdered standing up hmm. and had a hat and a different suit on hmm. compared to like all the other ones looked the same huh so that looked looked like maybe that was the game warden Mm, I don't know, unless he just dressed him up like the game warden to take out his frustrations or something. Because remember, he he was like writing the note to invite the game warden or whatever. Oh, maybe yeah. At the end of last episode, and and then if you look at the silhouette of what the game warden had on, I don't know. I'm just speculating here. But yeah, so. but but like even this article was saying, it's like Lady True seemed to like when she was talking to them, mentioned that they. I think she mentioned Adrian Bite was alive. So, you know, it's like, did Dr. Manhattan imprison him? Did she imprison him? Right. I don't know. Because if he is on the moon, I mean, who? I don't know. Could anyone besides Dr. Manhattan create like a full, full, like, environment like that? Like I said, curiouser and curiouser. Mm hmm. Uh, did you see, did you see him like aging up the clones? Yeah, like all like spinning on the machine. Like, yeah, I guess they were like screaming as a, you know he's just like doing busy work and he's <laughs> just like da 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 da. And they're done, and it's like yeah, full two fully cooked uh, naked clones. Yeah, it's very interesting. Two fully naked clones. Donk is a medical term. <laughs> <laughs> uh. What else do we get? Uh, 
Oh, and then I get uh, Will, Angela's grandfather, is, is working with Lady True in some capacity. Right. It, it's 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 weird. Mm-hmm. It just it's one of those things. I'm like, man, I want some. I want more like story fleshed out than just keep making me guess what's going on. Yeah. You know, like stop giving me so many mysteries and start solving something for me. Yeah, just because now I just wonder if we're going to get, get hit with answers all at once. Exactly, we're either going to get hit with answers all at once, or it's going to end up just being disappointing because it's been so much. Um, it's going to be so much of us trying to piece it together, mm-hmm. and then when we kind of figure it out, we'll be like, "Oh, that's what it was." I like what I had in mind better. So, are they doing like nine or t- I, the list I see? It's I up, s- up to nine. Episodes. I see nine. Yeah, yeah. Which is weird, because I feel like if you're going to go that far, you might as well just do 10, make it a nice even number. But I mean, we're, so we're basically kind of like halfway through already, almost. If we're if nine, or if it, even if it is 10, next episode will be like halfway. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, uh, it's something weird. I don't know. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I was looking at it, let's see if we can find any clarity. Come on, people, give Tyler some clarity. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we watch the episodes. But yeah, just like I like you were talking about, I like the conversation in the car with Lori and her assistant. And oh, uh, what about the senator when uh, Angela walks in, a sister night into like the precinct, and he's like, "Oh, you saved my life, Angela." He's like, "Oh, wait, we're not supposed to know that, right?" And you're like. It's like, yeah, why do you think she's wearing a mask, dummy? Or is, is he doing that on purpose? Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, something that makes me feel uncomfortable about him. Yeah, I love she's like, yeah, well, next time, don't get kidnapped. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't I just, I want there to be more to the story, and it's just kind of beating me down that... I'm watching to find out stuff, and they're like, "Okay, we'll tell you something, and then we'll just confirm it in the next, uh, next episode." So, oh. like last episode, they said, "Oh, that's your grandfather," and then, uh, in the next episode, they're like, "Yes, that is your grandfather." I'm like, "Hey, cool." <laughs> but did you notice uh, Will wasn't in a wheelchair at the end of the episode? Yeah, he stood up. I didn't, I thought he could stand up. The wheelchair is just part of his disguise. No, well, unless it's unless he can do it when he takes those pills or something. Because as as uh, Lori mentioned yet again, they keep bringing this up. He has to be over a hundred years old because she she ran his fingerprints off the car and said, "What was it? He was a cop in was it New York in like uh, the thirties and forties." Yep. Said he retired young. Forties, forties and fifties. About forties and fifties, and then he he retired young and it kind of just like dropped off the grid. Damn, that must be nice. Retired in the fifties and you're still alive like sixty years later. <laughs> Been retired bless, for sixty your, years. I love it. <laughs> they'd be like, uh, somehow your pension ran out and we're still paying you. Uh, yeah. Or he's on a trillionaire's payroll. Yeah, I mean. Hmm. Very interesting. It is very interesting. Well, I guess, uh, uh, but then when Angela was at the center, I guess they were sub- officially, he died as a child with his parents. Yeah. Everyone, because I mean, because remember, he gave, uh, you know, Will to his friends. They mm-hmm. took off and then they got killed, but Will survived. So what happened to the baby girl? Oh, yeah. That's right. You know, Will had her and took care of her, but what happened to her? Huh. Huh. What's with that giant clock? Mm. Yeah, the clock. What does it do? It tells time. Is it a clock? Tick tock, tick tock. Everybody says it like it's supposed to be the new ominous thing. So yeah, every episode it has to end with somebody saying tick tock, tick tock. Yeah. I mean, this episode, I, I I was like, okay, I guess Adrian Veidt is trying to escape. But before this week, you know, when Veidt was like, you know, had the Dr. Manhattan play and everything, I thought maybe I was like, oh, my God, is he going to like try to like recreate the experiment that created Dr. Manhattan? Is he like trying to give himself powers or something? 
that would have been kind of neat. But that's a big gamble, though. Got to you know, <laughs> got to vaporize yourself and hope you can pull yourself back together. There's, I feel like there's more questions than there are answers. Again, we're, we might be. We're and around even half- when we get answers, we're yeah. still like, what? So we're like halfway through the season already. I hope they answer at least most of these questions by the end of the season. Yeah, like I feel like we have too many characters almost because there are some characters I'd like to see more of, but we get nothing. <laughs> like we know that Andrea met her husband in Vietnam. And that he had an accident. Oh, Angela. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they don't say what kind or anything like that. But he doesn't like to lie. Yeah, exactly. Because Lori visited him. <sighs> Where's Uncle Judd? Well, he used to be nothing. Then he was a baby, a kid, an adult. Now he's nothing again. <laughs> I know that's bleak to tell little children. Like I know, I was like, "Damn, you can't, you can't even lie. Even if you don't believe in I'd God, just, you can't lie." Because then I just be like, "Well, I mean, that sets up that he doesn't like to lie, and that's what yeah, he believes. True. So he's going to tell what he believes. True. Because I'm like, damn. Because if I was a kid, I heard that like, then what's the point? I'm just going to go hang myself like Uncle Judd. True. <laughs> I mean, if he wanted to be true, I mean, he could still be honest and say, well, you know what? When we die, no one knows what happens. If he doesn't believe in an afterlife, that's all he, he, he literally say. No one knows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's truthful, too. At least, you, at least mystery, at least mystery is better. And you become nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mystery is better. I mean, it's not a lie. Like, you don't know. It's better than saying nothing. Exactly. But I think we pretty much capped this episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, Vite and Lou Man I mean, and I think there. I think we could probably stay here for like an hour to speculate on stuff, but there's really not a lot for us to. Again, we need more answers. So yeah, uh, I was gonna say I know we've done this before, but I want to look at episode titles coming up uh, next week. Little Fear of Lightning. Hey, it's better than the Pennyworth episodes where they're all singers that make no sense. I know. I know it's, it's shorter than I think it might be the shortest title so far. Uh, then episode six, this extraordinary being. Hmm. Episode seven, an almost religious awe. And again, episode eight. Hmm, I wonder who this could be. A god walks into a bar. Should have seen it coming. Nine. See how they fly. Uh huh. They. Well. Well, here's what's interesting. Just looking at the episode like run times Mm -hmm. an hour and one minute 55 minutes 53 52 59 an hour and a minute so to say 61 58 then the last then um 63 minutes and 67 minutes for the last episode oh just kind of just kind of interesting because usually they're very concise but it's like just those extra couple of minutes i'm like "Mm." but I was gonna say most of them they can't they keep them to an hour or under. <laughs> I'm like you, Walking Dead. Every episode's like an hour six, an hour seven. <laughs> well, like those are like you know those are on TV and they're like usually about the same because they're regulated by commercials. Yeah. These are on HBO. Yeah. So it's a little bit different, but you think about on HBO having a show that's an hour seven minutes is weird because then so I don't know. But it's good. I'm here for it. I just wish we get more. I'm impatient. I want answers. Right. Like, like I've said, like this is a show that I would binge. Like this is one that I would prefer to just watch. Oh yeah. Straight because I feel like you would get more out of the story than watching it each week because it's not like you know you have some shows that are they're designed to be weekly shows even when the story connects. And then you have some shows that just work like Game of Thrones. It would be a binge worthy show because there's so much stuff that happens in that ser- series that I forgot more of what happens that I had to be reminded. Like I felt like after each season before it started, I should have had a one hour like special of previously on. Yes. Just to catch you up because there was so much that went on. Oh, yeah. There's characters and stuff I forgot about that I was like, oh yeah, that's this guy. <laughs> But this is Watchmen. Yes. All right. So let's get out of here. Join us next week. <laughs> Who knows what we'll get next week? Yeah. Maybe some squids. Maybe not. Maybe someone maybe ca- catapulting through the air. Yeah. Maybe uh, 
we'll see the bodies land. It'll be called like got killed by a falling naked man. Oh my lord! How how I mean I know they have like their own original soundtrack, but how funny would that be if you're just like let the bodies hit the floor, let the bodies hit the floor. Like somebody I was listening to like on their cars or driving just for irony purposes, and it just and they're just like what the heck, or just like Rocket Man. Rocket Man. That'd be kind of funny. Like to start an episode with just a body floating, and that's what it's like. Rocket Man. Or you see all these bodies fight with shooting in the air, just come dropping back down. <laughs> oh, what about the squids? Uh, Wade was talking about. He's like, oh yeah, you know, they're probably as confused as we are. You know, they hit. You know, they live for like thirty seconds, and they hit the ground, they're dead. So they spend their whole life dying. I mean, that's kind of bleak, but interesting at the same. Token. So I was gonna say, so did fight just like rip a hole in space time and let's like it just is just open and squids just drop through every so often? Is he the one still doing it? Even well, that's what I'm saying. They, maybe he broke space time, but it's like I guess does Doctor Manhattan not care enough to seal the rift or whatever? <laughs> Couldn't Doctor Manhattan fix that? Yeah, he could. But the, isn't that part of his thing? Is he just doesn't care anymore? I guess. I mean. Who knows what he's doing on Mars? Oh yeah, because didn't Wade say something like, uh, "You know, everyone takes cover when you know when the squids start raining." Because they're like, "Oh, I thought this was the big one." And they wait mm-hmm. for like another giant squid that like killed, you know, when like killed everyone in New York, whatever. So, yeah, cheery. Exactly. All right, let's get out of here. All right, everyone, send us your thoughts on. <laughs> everything <laughs> everything watchman like anything uh slide into our uh, uh emails just like loop man capes and lunatics at gmail.com <laughs> call the voicemail 614-382-2737 that's 614-38 capes uh, and check out all of our social media links a link to our merchandise uh the youtube everything at uh linktree that's l-i-n-k-t-r dot ee slash capes and lunatics and go buy pot life the book a lot, yes. of our, a lot of our friends are in it including me i am my friend phil's my friend so i thank you and my friend mr tyler patrick where can people find you and the krypton report find me at krypton report um facebook instagram twitter uh gmail krypton report pod uh, you can find me personally at jty patrick on twitter and we talk about Superman and all things Kryptonian related over there. It's a good time. This past episode dropped this morning. It was nice. I got Jania, my wife, back on it. And I even got a little special sound bites from my daughter. So that was fun. That's right. Check it out. It has has me inspired. I want to record my son once I figure out what I want him to say. And <laughs> Solomon pops in and I'll record little things with both of them. But say that like that first didn't want to say anything and then she did it and she loved it. And then she's like, I want to do it again, daddy. I want to do it again. She kept taking the microphone and yelling in it. I'm like, hold on, baby girl. Hold on. <laughs> so that's right. Go download the latest episode of Krypton Report and uh, hear Tyler Patrick talk about his fantasy of his uh, daughter beating up four girls in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, dude. I'm telling you, she's vicious, man. <laughs> Like just in the year since you've seen her, like she, like she's just she's a force of nature, man. Like that, like this this morning, I pick her up. She goes, "Let's go to the living room, Daddy." I said, "Do you want your blanket?" She goes, "No, you can carry it." I'm like, "I'm like, all right, two year old bossy." Well, see, people, we know whose finger she, we know who's wrapped around her finger. Yes, I am so screwed. No. <laughs> Oh Lord! Just think how how young she is. Just imagine another ten, fifteen years. How rebellious she'll be. She's two, going on sixteen now. So uh, that's why I'm sort of comforted because I only have a son. I'm like I don't have to worry about boys chasing out after a daughter. I'm not so worried about boys chasing after. I'm more worried about the boys because she'll put them in her place. So yeah, well, we'll see. Walk. You come over here, and kiss me right now. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I bet I just just run for it, man. Just, just, just go. You come over here, kiss me right now. Just like your, just like your mother. Come here. You're a boy. 
Fala-se. All right. Let's get out of here. Ah. That's right. Come back next time. We will, we will rain down on you more knowledge, just like squids. I still can't get over Lube Man. And he, and he slid into the sewer. So I guess nothing can stick to him. I mean, if nothing can stick to him. Yeah, I know. It's just... Well, at first, he's, like, dousing himself, and I was like, wait a minute, is, I'm like, is that lighter fluid? Is he gonna, like, light himself on fire or something? And I was like, oh, my God, it's Lou. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, yeah. Lube himself up and slid right down that hole. I know, Will, it's crazy.